Well, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you from here at the Cincinnati Bar Association. If one looks at my varied career path, one would say, hmm, she can't keep a job. But that's not really the truth. For me, like the Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken, life has unfolded exactly like that. It's going to unfold for you as well in a similar manner. You find yourself walking down a road and you know very clearly what your direction is. The path is paved, it's worn, it's ready for you to walk down it. You can see the light at the end of it as you're journeying there. But all of a sudden, as you start down that path, another pathway emerges. It's not as clear. It needs some wear. The branches are bending over. You can't really see around the bend, but it, there's a promise at the end of it. As you stand and reflect on those two paths, you must decide. Continue this path that I'm on, or take a risk and go down this path. My life has unfolded like that, and I believe all of yours will as well. Every day you have the opportunity to be one with your career. One, O-N-E. I chose that acronym because it's easy to remember, but it also signifies you. You are one. Your career is one, but varied. And as a result of it, you have great opportunities to achieve. O stands for opportunity. As a law enforcement officer, I thought my die was cast. That was my ceiling, but it was a high school teacher who said, Sharon, that's not a ceiling for you. That's a floor. The ceiling is you could be a lawyer and you could be a judge. And I looked at Mr. Shearing and I said, Mr. Shearing, that's not possible. I'm not one of those. And at 17, I think what not one of those meant was I wasn't from an affluent family, wealth wise, nor were they politically affluent. So for me, I really doubted that that was something I could achieve. My family, I was the first to graduate college. I thought all lawyers were generational, or their parents were doctors or dentists, that that was too high of a reach for someone like me. But as a result of that opportunity, him planting that seed, law enforcement gave me the second opportunity to see he was right. Many of the lawyers that I met serving as a law enforcement officer were just like me. They were the first to go to college. Their parents weren't generationals, doctors or lawyers, and there were some of those, but the bulk of them weren't. I was on a witness stand being cross-examined when I realized I was as smart as other lawyers and I could make it through law school. <laughs> I literally had that moment where I'm saying, hmm, I know I'm smarter than that guy. <laughs> if that guy could make it through law school, I know I can because I could ask better questions here. <laughs> but those are moments. There was a moment in there that I did not appreciate until much later. He was a criminal defense attorney. He was renowned in Butler County, and I had the opportunity to be on the other side of him on a case. I had worked in an undercover operation, and he had a defendant that was arrested as a result of that undercover operation. It was a fleeting moment. To shake his hand, to talk to him, to explain to him what I had observed, what the evidence was going to reveal as his client wanted to pursue a trial. At the end of the case, I won. We had forged a relationship that I didn't really appreciate. But I knew then, after all of that experience, I was heading off to that new path that I really couldn't see the end of. As I resigned my commission in law enforcement, I was struck in the middle of the night with a panic attack. Great anxiety. I have never left a job. I have never quit employment without having another employment opportunity already there. And what I was leaving my full-time job for was going back to school. No real path, no real end sight, other than I knew I wanted to be a lawyer. 
that, uh, that opportunity and the opportunities that created the opportunity of going to law school meant everything. The end for one is networking. I find it perhaps a greater challenge for all of you, for those who were born with devices in their hands and can work them. I still have to ask people for help. How do, how do you do that again? And I really hate it when they just grab it and say, oh, just let me do it. You can't learn this. I'm like, no, I really need to learn it. And I am teachable. It's just, it takes me a little longer. Because networking is, while I agree that you could probably network electronically, networking for me was having this, of actually going into a courtroom, of actually meeting people, of actually being out there. I was networking when I was in law enforcement, and I didn't really realize I was networking. But that relationship, that one case, ended up being the judge that I would later clerk for as he left the practice of law to hang up the guns and become a trial court judge. He had heard I went to law school, and he called me up and said, I'd like you to come see me. I just had dinner with him last night, Judge Crehan, and we actually reminisced about that day that I went to interview with him. Wasn't really much of an interview, not in the traditional sense. It was really a conversation, a conversation of two people and deciding, do you like one another well enough to work with one another and the load that you're going to do, but also to have that connectedness, that being like-minded. As we walked from his law office down to where his new courtroom would be, be and if you're from Butler County watching this and you have any age on you or salt, you will actually know that what I'm talking about is the old Walsh Chambers. It's somehow somewhat fitting that the bar that all the lawyers hung out in would later be converted to a courtroom. <laughs> Strange as that may be. But we walk down to the old Walsh Chambers and we walk through what would be his new home in the trial court. It was a great walk as we talked about our philosophy as he talked about his path, he had been in the Marine Corps during Vietnam. He had been in the FBI. That pathway of serving as a law enforcement officer, that connection, that case, watching him try cases and talking to him afterwards as I was going or in, in Butler County as a law enforcement officer, those were amazing opportunities. But it was that connection, that networking, but it was more than just that one. Whether serving as a law enforcement officer, serving as a law clerk to him, or actually in the practice of law itself, hanging out that shingle on Dayton Street. I was making networking connections all my life and I didn't know to call it it. I had mentors that were built in based on friendships and all of you have that same opportunity. One of the greatest opportunities of being in a small bar in Butler County, and it is the same here, even in a larger bar, is that I know of no senior lawyer, seasoned, wise, that wouldn't take, jump at a phone call from any of you to network, to share that cup of coffee, for you to say, I don't really want to ask someone else, but I feel comfortable, can I ask you this? And for them never to laugh at a question, but to say, I had that same issue in my own practice. Those networking opportunities also give the opportunity to say, I'm in trouble. I know I'm in over my head. And as a solo practitioner, there were those moments when I knew I was in over my head. The other, the point here is, are you going to drown and say, I'm not going to ask? Or are you going to go find somebody seasoned and wise that will give you some answers to help you through? I always chose the latter. I am not the smartest person in the room. I am smart in that I always know my limitation and know where to go to pick up the phone and find somebody to help me. And those moments came in solo practice. Many lawyers end up in solo practice right now. They need to have that confidence to create those relationships. And one short story. A lawyer asked me to take over a case for him. He was going on vacation. Of course you said yes. All of a sudden he's gone, you're reading the file and you realize, oh my goodness gracious, 
He is four days from running his statute of limitations on a tort action, and I need to draft my first complaint. I need to do it with only the documents that I have here, and I was in over my head, and I called one of my networking friends, my mentors, Mike Sage, and said, I need some help. He didn't tell me how to do it, but we kicked the case around, and it was then and there that I realized I had missed some key components in my complaint, and I ran back to the office and added some new counts to my complaint. It was that relationship, that moment, that kept me from doing something that perhaps would injure a client. As a result of that, I was forever grateful to all of my mentors and all of the mentors that you would connect with and create as you network. They'll be there for you. I'll be one of those as well. Maria has my number, she you can always get me. 24 hours a day, I'm usually up all the time. <laughs> it's a sad little story, I know, but. And as I travel Ohio and I'm in the car a lot, I got a lot of windshield time, so I'm good for a conversation at any time. E, engage. At the end of this journey, it is about what you have engaged. What do you want? What are you seeking? Where do you want to be? It is something that I thought was unusual and limited to type A personalities like myself, but I whiteboard my dreams. I have that board up on my bedroom wall and I actually look at it every day. This is where I want to go, what is it? In the beginning, as I changed my career from law enforcement to law school to private practice, it wasn't a whiteboard moment for me. It was one of those things that I just knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to try cases. I knew I wanted to be the advocate in the courtroom. My mother would say it's because I like to argue. <laughs> I disagree with that. <laughs> I just think that I have a very assertive personality. <laughs> But I knew that was my path. And you create that and you develop those relationships as a result. But it was the last conversation with Judge Crehan on my last day as law clerk before I hung out my shingle that really set my engagement for the rest of my career. He's chucking that last civil file into the outgoing bin that I had just worked on for him and he said, well kid, what do you think you want to do? And I said, Judge, I want to be you. I want to try a lot of cases and a lot of courts and stand up and make arguments, fall down, get up, find the best course, and really hone that skill. And then sometime, I'd like to be you. I'd like to be a judge someday. I enjoyed my work at clerking for him, the variety of the cases I touched. You have to appreciate that this is this is the year of the flip from typewriters to word processing on computers and judge and his secretary Lillian Labuno they were coming from the old world they never even worked on computers I worked with L Lillian many days many nights helping her learn how to copy and paste documents and data teaching him how to pull up the jury instructions and dump them in so he didn't need me anymore after I was gone. But it was being able to work on all those pieces, criminal cases, civil cases, that I knew I was set, I had great passion for, and I was on my way. And in that moment, he said to me, he said, kid, you can do all that. You can do all of that and so much more. You are so young, so ambitious, you can make it all the way to the Ohio Supreme Court. And I laughed. And I did the thing that I did with Mr. Shearing in my high school, and I had I been standing up, I'd have rocked back and said, Judge Crehan, that's not possible because blah, 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 blah. Well, look at me now today. <laughs> As we talked about that last night at dinner, he reminded me of what I wanted to say here today. 
He's led that same life, that same career of one. Opportunity, networking, engaging. No one can set your path or your journey for you. Only you can. And when you put that top goal at the top of that whiteboard, you fill in the rest of the bottom of what do I need to get there? Is it a class? Is it a degree? Is it certain entities? Do you need to engage politically or socially or whatever it is? Put it on the board. It helps you focus every day on what that dream is. And as you work your way up the board, it is the opportunity, it is the networking, and it is your engagement in life in this great and noble profession that we all share that will lead you to your home. God bless you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today for a TED Talk on career opportunities. And happy Valentine's Day.